Okay, guys, we're going to start with our session. So good morning, everybody. And welcome to this video conference for English uh, Upper Intermediate. Today we have a session that continues with the topic of hypothetical situations. So we're going to introduce this. We're talking about expressing regret and confusing words. So the couple of topics that we have for today are first some grammar and structure and the second part of confusing words is about vocabulary. So we are ready to start with our interactions. Remember that the chat is open. You can use the chat window to give your ideas or you can open the microphone if you have something to say. Well, uh, first we're going to talk about mistakes in life. So I'm going to show you some actions or activities that people do, and sometimes they are considered mistakes. So which of these mistakes are usually made by children? Which mistakes are usually made by teenagers? And which mistakes are usually done or made, sorry, by adults or adult people? So here we go with the list. The first action is falling in love with the wrong person. So when people fall in love with the wrong person, who usually make this mistake? Is it children, teenagers, or adults? So you can use the chat window to type your answer. Welcome, Jandre, and welcome, Angela. I see you entered the session. So who is this mistake usually made by? Falling in love with wrong people, adults, teenagers, or children. Okay, so Stephanie and Angela say teenagers. Also, Luisa and Jandre agree that teenagers usually fall in love with the wrong person. Right, because, you know, uh, teenagers are growing up. So that can be a typical mistake. Now, the second action is getting lost on their way home. So you're going to your house from university, but you get lost. So what kind of people usually get lost on their way home? Children, teenagers, or adults? Go. Well, you say, on an, on an almost lead, you say Valeria, Lisette, Laura, Paula, Angela, and Jandre think that children usually get lost on their way home. Yeah, that is dangerous because some children can really get lost and then we have problems finding them. Okay, the next action is losing money. So when you lose 10,000 pesos or 20,000 pesos somewhere. So what kind of people usually lose their money? Children, teens, or adults? Welcome, Angie. Welcome to the session. We already started. Teens. So Gisela says that teens usually lose their money. Yeah, you put the money in your pockets, in your jeans, or maybe in a book, and then you lose the money. Angela also says that teenagers, and Juliet says that both adults and teenagers usually lose their money. Good. Now, the next action is giving away something important. Remember that giving away is regalar, regalar. So what kind of people usually give away something important? Same. You give away your, I don't know, maybe your cell phone or you give away your books. Adult people, says Laura, also Luisa, says adults, and also Andrea. So adults usually give away something important, maybe a collection or a piano or, well, something that is treasured. Andrea also says that adults usually give away important things. And now, uh, the next action we have on the list is breaking up with best friends for silly things. So what group of people usually break up with their friends for silly things? Children, teenagers, or adults? Teens. Angela says that teens usually break up with their best friends for silly reasons. 
Gisela and Jandre also say teens or teenagers. So they usually break up for, you know, not very um, dramatic reasons, but just a silly reason. Okay, children. Andrea says that children usually break up with their best friends also for silly reasons. And Paula thinks the same. Good. Now we continue with the next topic. The topic is spending money on useless things. So what kind of people usually spend their money on useless things? Buying albums, buying candy, buying a poster, buying... Well, here we have answers. Jandre says adults. Uh, Angela, Laura. Okay, Jandre says teenagers. Luisa also says teenagers. Joanna says teenagers too. So that is especially when people are studying at school. So father and mother give them money for the snacks and some teenagers spend their money on useless things, right? Toys or entertainment. Okay. The next topic is making friends with bad people or what we call bad company, bad company. So what kind of people usually make friends with bad people or bad company? Bad boys, bad boys. Andrea says adults. So adults usually get involved with bad people. Valeria also says that teenagers, so it can be the variation. So. Yeah, we can conclude that both adults and teenagers usually make friends with bad people from bad consequences. Laura Fonseca also says that teenagers usually make friends with bad people. Okay, on the second column, we have the next topic. The topic is disrespecting parents. So what kind of people usually disrespect parents? I, you know, this is... Uh, maybe with insulting words or visual aggression or things like that. So Andrea says that children, and Stephanie says that children and teens usually disrespect parents. Uh, also, Lisette, Angela, and Jandre agree that children usually disrespect their parents. Okay. The next topic that is a sensitive topic is getting pregnant and not wanting. So this goes for both, for males and females, because, you know, uh, having a baby is an action of two. So what kind of people usually get pregnant not wanting to? Children, teens, or adults? Oh, well, we have an on an animal's answer that is teenagers. So many of you, the majority says, Teenagers or Valeria says adults and teenagers. So basically it can be these two groups, teens and adults. Okay, now the next action we have is drunken driving. So this is when people are driving and they are drunk by alcohol. So what kind of people usually drink while they are drunk or drive while they are drunk, drunken? So what do you think is the kind of people who do it? Elisette says adults. Joanna says adults too for drunken driving. Uh, Angie Gonzalez says adults too. Kelly Joanna, hello Kelly. Uh, Joanna says adults too. So we can conclude that mostly adults usually have problems with this drunken driving. Okay, welcome Fabian, welcome to the session. The next topic is getting married but not wanting. So when people get married and they don't want to, what kind of people usually do this? Well, obviously not children, but maybe we can say teenagers or adults. Do they get married more often without wanting? Ah, oh, well, Fabian says depends in India. Oh, yeah. Sadly, in India or in the Middle Eastern countries, some children have to get married. Well, girls especially. Yeah, that is sad. Here you say Valeria and Joanna think that adults get married not wanting. It's because of convenience, right? 
Well, I hope it's not the case for you. The next topic is mm, doing a job you hate. So this is basically working on something that you don't like. So what kind of people usually do this? Adults, teens, or children? Andrea says adults. Laura agrees. She says that adults too. Also, Fabian agrees that adults usually get married. Uh, well, do jobs that they don't like or they do jobs that they hate. Jandra and Lisette also agree that adults usually do jobs they hate. Also, Angela thinks this. And finally, uh, the topic is killing a pet by pleasure. Well, that sounds weird, but that is the action. What kind of people usually kill a pet by pleasure? Well, we have some uh, answers here. Andrea says that bad adults, and this is true. Unfortunately, some adults who are supposedly to be rational, they kill or mistreat pets by pleasure. So it can be by bad adults, uh, bad children as well, says Fabian. Uh, psychopaths, says Juliet. Joanna says adults and bad people, says Angie. So in general, it can apply to bad people. Okay, guys, this is an intro to what we are going to talk about that are the things that shouldn't have been. Uh, this is connect, connected with the topic that we were practicing yesterday about recommendations in past. So remember that we were giving advice about past situations. Uh, here is an example. The situation is I ate too much last night and I got a stomach ache. So that is my situation. Uh, what is the advice that you can give? You say, for example, I shouldn't have eaten too much last night, or maybe I should have eaten just cookies and soda, something little, right? So in these sentences from A to E, I'm going to read them out. And in the chat, you are going to tell me what is the advice for each situation. The first situation is I didn't pay attention to my mom's instructions. And as a consequence, I bore the cake. So what is your advice in the past? For the second situation, B, I didn't take my umbrella and it rained on my way home. Uh, remember guys that uh, in class, we were talking about Morphe's law, Las Leyes de Morphe. So this is an example of Morphe's law. I didn't take my umbrella and it rained on my way home. Typical. Uh, situation C, I stopped to tell the time to a man in the street and he robbed my cell phone. Well, it was an unfortunate action. I was telling the time to a man in the street and then he robbed my cell phone. So what should have been done in that case? Situation D, my father bought a faulty watch. Remember that faulty is defectuoso or in mal estado. So my father bought a faulty watch and he threw the receipt away. Uh -huh. And then situation E, uh, my friend left my home late at night and then he was attacked by robbers. Mm, that was the situation. So according to these uh, situations, what do you think is the correct advice or the typical advice in these situations? Remember that you can write sentences using the perfect model for should have. So uh, in the title, we say things that shouldn't have been. Or in the example, I say, I shouldn't have eaten that much. So guys, uh, I welcome your comments and your examples of advice in the past. Welcome Javier and welcome Daniela who joined the session. Okay, we are getting some answers in the chat, that is nice. So we're going to wait one more minute and then we will read your contributions in the chat. Maybe the first situation when you didn't pay attention to mom's instructions and then you burn the cake, that is a true story, right? So sometimes our mothers are telling us instructions on how to cook 
or how to prepare food, but we don't pay attention and then yeah, we make mistakes. So that is a popular advice or a typical advice from home and from life. Well, we have some answers in here. So I'm happy to read your answers. Laura Fonseca says, for this situation, you should have paid attention. Remember the spelling for paid is P-A-I-D, irregular verb. Angie says, I should have paid attention to my mother's instructions. Yeah, that is the lesson. Jandre says, I should have paid attention to mom's instructions. Andrea says something different. You shouldn't have ignored your mom. Uh, without two. Two is not necessary, so you shouldn't have ignored mom. For situation E, uh, for the situation in which my friend left home late at night and he was attacked by robbers, uh, Gisela says my friend should have stayed at my home and leave the next day. Yeah, maybe this is sensitive advice in that case. For situation B, when I didn't take my umbrella and it rained, Laura Fonseca says, mm, I should have taken my umbrella all day, probably all day. Yeah, I should have taken my umbrella all day. Uh, Jandre says something similar. I should have taken my broly or my umbrella. Uh, Andrea says, I should have brought my umbrella. Yes, definitely. Now, niños, what is your advice for situations C and D? In situation C, I stopped in the street to tell the time to a man, an unknown person, and he robbed my cell phone. Typical. And deep, my father bought a faulty watch, and unfortunately, he threw the receipt away. Well, for situation C, uh, being robbed the cell phone in the street, Jandre says, I shouldn't have stopped to tell the time to a man in the street. Correct, this is the way. And Jandre makes the correction of stopped. Correct, Nina. Uh, Angela, about the situation, Angela says, I shouldn't have shown my cell phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a typical regret. And in Colombia, this is what we say, dar papaya or give papaya. But well, unfortunately in Colombia, this is a matter of security. Andrea says, I shouldn't have stopped when a man robbed my cell phone. I should have attacked him. Well, if you knew some karate or martial arts, maybe you should, uh, you should have defended yourself. But, well, this is dangerous also. Uh, well, we have these examples, which are pretty nice. So here we have other examples of typical answers. For the first situation, I should have listened to my mom's advice. In B, I should have taken an umbrella with me, as you said. For C, I shouldn't have told the time to that man. I should have run. Uh, so in that case, we have the two options. I should have run. For D, I should have kept ah, him. Remember that situation, D is about my father. He bought a faulty watch. So the advice for my father is he should have kept the receipt. Uh, for situation E, um, ah, this is what Gisela said in the chat. My friend should have stayed in my house or he or she shouldn't have left late. ¿Para qué se puso? Maybe he should have taken an Uber or a pickup or something, right? Well, guys, uh, the next part of our session is my worst mistake. You know that everybody makes mistakes and this is part of life this is part of learning lessons in life so we're talking about the worst mistakes of some people uh, well we're not going to um, interrogate or investigate your lives because this is not the purpose but instead we're going to give some examples of people's mistakes in life so here we have an example uh, my biggest mistake was having a baby when I was at high school. This is from Kate, 21 years old. So this is a common mistake. Uh, another one. My biggest mistake was marrying a person I didn't love. I did it for the money. Uh, this is from Claire, 32. Well, maybe you know some people like them. Hay gente así. 
And then my biggest mistake was lending money to a person I didn't know very well. He borrowed three million from me and then disappeared. Mm, well, this person was very innocent. Uh, Michael, 38. Well, this sometimes happens to you or your family or friends, situations like this. So these people are regretting about their biggest mistake. Here we still have more examples about the biggest mistakes. Uh, my worst mistake was selling drugs. Now I'm in prison for six years. Uh, this is from Nick, 23. Another one, my worst mistake was drunk driving. I had a bad accident and now I have a limitation. So it means a physical uh, limitation or handicapped. Mm, this is from Duke, 40 years old. And finally, my worst mistake was living abroad. I had a terrible time there and I lost a lot of money. Uh, this is from Kendra, 25. Well, when people go abroad, some have good experiences, some others don't have a terrible, or sometimes they have a terrible time or experience as Kendra. So this is what happens to people. Ah, well, we have one more here on the screen. My worst mistake was starting something I don't like. I'm unhappy with my job and life. This is from Chris, 32. Well, now we're expressing regret. Remember that when people regret something, it's something they repent. Okay, so a synonym for regret is repent. Here we have an example of expressing regret in a conversation. I shouldn't have studied veterinary. Why do you say that? If I hadn't studied veterinary, I would have been a psychologist, not a vet. So what is the regret of this person? The regret of this person is a career choice. And sometimes, well, at your age, some people regret their choices in careers. But my advice is that it's never too late. I have some friends who, well, they almost finished a career or a program, or they actually finished a program at university and they they did something different so it's never too late to express this kind of regret for this we're using the third conditional structure so in the third conditional we're talking about imaginary situations in the past so it's basically like the second conditional that we already practiced but in the past so these are hypothetical or imaginary situations that we use in the past. In the structure, we use the conditional if plus a past perfect sentence. So I say, for example, if I had gone to that concert, if I hadn't eaten uh, those many sweets, right? Then the consequence is a perfect conditional. For example, I say, if I hadn't eaten those many sweets, I wouldn't have had a stomachache. Or remember the situation of Kendra. If Kendra hadn't traveled abroad, she wouldn't have had a bad time. So this is the structure we use in the third conditional sentences. Okay, here we're going to recall some of the examples that we read about regrets. And now we're going to use conditionals. Uh, remember the situation of Nick. Uh, Nick shouldn't have sold drugs. Why? If he hadn't sold drugs, he wouldn't have gone to prison. Now, remember that Nick is in prison and he's doing six years there. So this is how we can use uh, the third conditional to give advice and to express regret on those decisions. Kendra Maria, this is the situation. Kendra shouldn't have lived abroad. If she hadn't lived abroad, she wouldn't have lost a lot of money, right? So this is how can we can use the expression. About Kate, Kate shouldn't have had a baby at school. If she hadn't had a baby at school, she would have finished her studies. Here, when we are using the spoken form 
or the contracted form is typical to say would have. Would have is the short form for would have. So it's more common in conversation, right? Would have. Uh, for the negative, you say wouldn't have. Wouldn't have. Now is your goal, is your turn, guys. Uh, well, this is to remember the conditional sentences with if and the past perfect and would have in the past participle, right? Now, uh, this is how we are going to participate now. We are going to make third conditional sentences based on this statement. So each situation has a kind of regret. So you are going to write conditional sentences to express uh, what would have done, what would have happened in that case. The first case is Mike shouldn't have played one million pesos at the casino. Wow. For the second situation, uh, we should have arrived at the concert much earlier. Why do you say that? Uh, C, I should have saved much more money in my youth years or my younger years. Situation D, I should have been, uh, we, we're talking as a group. Uh, in situation D, we should have been conquered by the British. Remember that the meaning of conquer is conquistados. We should have been conquered by the British, not the Spanish. Uh, situation E, I should have had better eating habits in my childhood. Why do you say that? Uh, next, I, I should have told my best friend, I shouldn't have told my best friend that she was stupid. Well, that was something serious. So you're going to uh, express uh, these ideas or these situations in third conditional sentences. Now we'll take a couple of minutes as you process your answers and then we'll go with some examples of the answers. Go! Well, remember to make conditional sentences. If the situation is Mike shouldn't have played one million pesos at the casino, you can say uh, if Mike uh, if Mike hadn't played one million pesos at the casino, he would have saved the money. Or you can say if Mike hadn't wasted one million at the casino, uh, he would have bought a new cell phone. Right? So the idea is that you use third conditional sentences according to the situation. Aha. Well, good. We have some examples already. Valeria says, if Mike, if Mike had not played one million at the casino, he wouldn't have lost all his money. That is correct. Jandre says, if Mike hadn't played in the casino, he would have saved, saved in past the money. Santiago, hello Santi, if Mike hadn't, in that case you can say, if Mike hadn't played one million at the casino, he would have had a lot of money. 
Well, that's good. This is the case that you can give advice expressing regret. Uh, what about the time of the concert? We should have arrived at the concert much earlier. Why do you say that? Go. Okay, time is up. Now we're going to see what you say here in the chat. For the second situation, Karen says, if Laura had taken a bath earlier, uh, we wouldn't have lost the concert. Ah, okay. When you say perderse el concierto is miss, miss. So in that case, you can say, if Laura had taken a bath earlier, uh, we wouldn't have missed the concert. Mm -hmm. Jandre says, eh, if I had saved much more money, I would have gone to the concert. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in that case, we're talking about the time of getting to the concert. So the situation that Karen explains is good for this example. Well, more opinions about situation C and D. I should have saved much more money in my youth years we should have been conquered by the British. Imagine if we had been conquered by the British. Mm, Angie says, if I hadn't come to the concert earlier, I would have missed the concert. Okay, yes, this is an example, Angie. Mm, Laura says, if we had come or arrived, well, you can say come. If we had come at the concert, we would have had been in the first places. Ah, or maybe you say earlier, yes. If we had come to the concert earlier, we, we would have got the best placers. Give me this M. Santi says, if we had arrived earlier to the concert, we would have had in the first places. Or we would have been, maybe. We would have been in the first places or in the front row. When you are in front of the artist, you are in the front row. Primera fila. Uh, Gisela says, if I had, if I had saved money when I was younger, uh, I would have retired earlier. Well, I understand the meaning of your idea, but I made the correction. If I had saved more money when I was younger, I would have retired earlier, right? Uh, what about D? D is a situation that we usually fantasize about because you know that America was conquered by Spanish people or Spaniards. But what would have happened if Latin America or South America had been conquered by the British? Imagine, mates, we would be what? Thanks. Okay, Gisela, my pleasure. Uh, we are in situation D. We, we should have been conquered by the British, British Empire. Imagine about the language, imagine the standard of living, imagine the culture in Colombia, imagine the traditions in Latin America. Okay, about situation E, Brian says, if I had had better eating habits in my childhood, I wouldn't have embarrassing pictures from back then <laughs> well this is fun i wouldn't have okay well in that case brian is making a mixed conditional so he's mixing the third with the second <laughs> so if i had had better eating habits uh, i wouldn't have deleted my younger pictures from facebook for example <laughs> karen says if the British had conquered us, we would have been English speakers. Yeah, and we, and we would have learned Spanish as a foreign language, not English. 
But well, thanks God we learn English because it's much easier than learning Spanish, you know. This is a nice example. Mm, well, we are still missing situation F. I shouldn't have told my best friend that she was stupid. So this was a typical uh, argument with a bestie, with a best friend. And she says, if you had been conquered by the British, uh, we, we would speak. Well, you can make the combination of third and second. So you can say we would speak English or we would have spoken English, right? Santiago says, uh, if we had been conquered by the British, we would have spoken English uh -huh, as our first language. No like, but as, as our first language. That is good, Santi. Jandre Maria says about the last situation, if I hadn't told stupid to my best friend, we would have been still friends. Uh, we would have been still friends. Mm -hmm. Regret, that is a typical situation of regret. When you call names to a friend or to a person you love, then you regret. If I, if I hadn't called you stupid, uh, we would still have been friends or we would still be friends. You can use the second conditional or third. Uh, the good thing is that in the third conditional, sometimes we can mix. So we can mix situations from the past to a present imaginary. So uh, this is what we call mixed conditionals. And you are going to be practicing these mixed conditionals on the internet in an activity. ¿Quién más dice? Uh, Laura Fonseca says, if I had had, remember that you use the past perfect, so no problem with repeating had. So you say, Laura, if I had had better eating habits, I wouldn't have been sick or I wouldn't have gotten sick. After the verb have, that is an auxiliary, you need another verb. So I wouldn't have gotten sick. Okay, niños, time. Now, the next part of our lesson uh, is confusing words in English. So you know that there are some words that are confusing, like the words confused or confusing. So this is an example. When you say the exercise was confused or the exercise was confusing. Now, niños, uh, here we have some confusable words. So you're watching the screen and this is the activity. Here in the screen, we have some sentences that use similar words. So we're going to choose which word is better, right? For the first one, uh, we have a couple of words, let's say it, that are here in number one. This is the sentence. The film was full of clever special effects or effects. So which word do you select? Special effects or special effects? Tell me that in your chat. Okay, we have answers in the chat. So for the number one, you say B effects, B, B, B. So anonymously, people say B, special effects. Well, because we already know, right? <laughs> Effect is a noun, but affects is a verb of affectation, right? E effect, yes, Laura is correct. Now in number two, I'm not sure whether we will be able to attend the wedding. So which weather do you select? Weather A or weather B? Uh, these words are homophones. They sound the same. They have the same sound, but different meaning. So which weather do you choose, A or B? I'm not sure whether we'll be able to attend the wedding. It is in Karen, Valeria, and Andrea say weather beam. Weather beam. Joanna says B. Andrea says B. Okay, I'm not sure whether we'll be able to attend the weather. The, the weather, no, the wedding. Uh, Paula says A. Okay, guys, what else do you think? A or B? Tell me, tell me, where is Santi's answer? Where is Gisela's answer? Where is Javier's answer? Uh, Lisette. Where is Lisette? Santiago says A. Ah, oh, okay. Now we have some opinions divided. Come on, niños. A, A. Oh, okay. Now you turn to answer A. So let's O, B. Sentence A or answer A. 
weather is correct because this weather is a synonym for if. So you say, I'm not sure if we will be able to attend the weather, the wedding. The second uh, weather in B is the climate. So I say, for example, today the weather is cold, right? It's gloomy. That is the weather. Seguimos. Uh, number three, uh, several bricks in the garden wall have come loose or loose. Aha. Well, these words are similar, but obviously they have a difference. So loose or loose. Several bricks in the garden wall have become loose. So do you choose loose A or loose B? Which loose will give you the loose? ¿Cuál te dará más luz? Loose. So uh, here you have the screen. Several gardens, uh, what? Several bricks of the garden wall have become loose. For number three, Jan dresses A. For number three, Angie says A as well. Stephanie says A. Okay, what other answers do we have? Loose A or loose B? Lucy, Lucy. Paula says B. Okay. Who else tells me for number three? You choose loose A or loose B? Come on, come on, come on. Andrea says A. Okay, the majority. Okay, we have B. Okay, let's wait for two more answers and we decide whether it will be A or B. ¿Quién dijo? Okay, one more, one more. Valeria, Brian, and Joanna say B. Nobody else? Nobody else. And Joanna says B. Okay, majority of answers B. Correct. Uh, loose with double O is an adjective. So in this sentence, when you say several bricks in the garden wall have come loose, is suelto, que están sueltos. O cuando dice el pantalón le queda suelto, you say my jeans are a little bit loose. Están sueltos. Uh, loose, the first loose with an A, with an O, sorry, with only one O, is uh, the verb, soltar. Soltar, lose, or also perder, I don't want to lose. Dejar suelto o perder algo. For example, you say, I lose uh, my money or I lose something, right? Or soltar algo. Uh, I lose it. Number four. Uh, now, guys, we are seeing sentence four that is, I'm totally disinterested or uninterested in grammar. It is really dull. When it's something is dull, is when something is like boring. So, niños, what do you think is the right word? Uninterested or disinterested? ¿Quién dijo? Tell me your answers. Y dice, well, Paula says A, Jandre A, Stephanie A, Angela A, Angie the first. Angie says that B. Majority says A. Wow. Okay, niños, I see the majority of, of you choose A. So we're going to mark A as the answer. Vean pues. <laughs> no. Uh, Angie was right. Punto para Angie. Angie says that is disinterested, but disinterested means impartial. Impartial, right? So when you are not interested in grammar, the correct word is to say uninterested. Something that is disinterested is desinteresado. Cuando, you, cuando dicen, por ejemplo, una ayuda desinteresada o apoyo desinteresado es disinterested help or disinterested support. Uh -huh. So you learn the lesson on this. Then we have number five. Uh, here is the old man gave a chilling prophecy or prophecy. Oh, well, a chilling is something exciting or thrilling. So what kind of thing did the man give? Was it a prophecy with an S or a prophecy with a C? What do you think? 
Go, go, go. The prophecy and the heresy. Okay. They are similar in the use, but you should tell me if you think it's A or B. So opinions on this, mm, you say B, 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 Andrea says A, prophecy with an S. ¿Quién más dijo? A or B. The old man gave a chilling prophecy. So what kind of prophecy was that? With an A or with a, with an S or with a C? Mm, well, here I see that you, most of you chose B. So we're going to go with B. So, correct. Prophecy with a C is a noun. It's what prophets give. And prophecy with an S, well, basically it's also a noun, but it's more an augurio. Augurio, prophecy. Let, uh, number six. Now we continue with six. We needed to order some more. Stationary or stationary. These words are also homophones. They have the same sound but different meaning and different spelling. So here we have stationary with an E and stationary with an A. ¿Qué dicen niños? What do you say is the correct one? Stationary A or stationary B? Mm. Valeria says B. Mm -hmm. Uh, who else says we needed to order some more stationery with an A or with an E? Well, Laura, Angie says, say B, Angie says A, and Jandra says A. Okay, opinions go for A. Let's check if it's A. <laughs> Correct, stationery means office supply. So basically it means papeleria or los utensilios de papeleria, stationery. So in this sentence we needed to order some stationery. It's maybe clips, paper, pencils and pens. The other B stationery is something that is temporary. So a stationery thing is something that is temporary or partial in time. Y seguimos. Number seven, <clears throat> the ball was passed to the new striker who was lurking at the far post. Uh, this is talking about baseball, for example, playing the sport. So the baseball, uh, the ball was passed to the new striker. Is it past A or past B? What do you say? Past A or past B? Paula says B, Jandre says B, and we have more messages. Karen, Luisa, Daniel, Andrea, Angela, and Laura say B. So the an anonymous answer is B. <laughs> Correct. Past is the past tense of past. But in the first option, this past is a synonym for history. My past, my history. Okay, guys, now we have one more. Smoking in this building is not allowed or allowed. Again, these are homophone words. So they have the same sound, different spelling, and different pronunciation. So which allowed do you select? Allowed A or allowed B, according to the context? Smoking in this building is not allowed. It isn't allowed A or allowed B. Laura Frank, Laura Fonseca says B, Andrea says B. ¿Quién me dijo yo la vi? ¿Mm? Tell. No more answers. Allowed A or allowed B. Okay, I see two B, so we're going with letter B. <laughs> Correct. Uh, allowed means permitted, and the first allowed in option A is mm, similar to noisy. 
when the volume or the person speaks aloud, they speak with loud voice. All right, this is loud and clear. So allowed is similar to permitted. Smoking is not allowed. Smoking is not permitted. Okay, we are finishing. We have one, two more. And number nine, I am no longer dependent on my parents for financial support. So which dependent do you use? Dependent A or dependent B? Dependent with an A or dependent with an E? Uh, again, they are homophone words. They have the same sound, the same pronunciation, uh, different spelling for the vowel, and they have a little different meaning. ¿Quién nos dijo? Jandre Maria says B, dependent with an E. So Jandre says E. Laura Fonseca says B, also dependent with an E. Set says B, dependent with an E, definitely. So, we mark dependent with a B. Correct. Dependent with an E means relying on another. So, you say, I'm no longer dependent on my parents. So, it's dependiente. Uh, the other dependent with an A means uh, something that is contingent or supported. I say, for example, I'm dependent on the weather, right? So, it's a contingency. And finally, number 10, he was loath to admit to being wrong. He was loath to admit to being wrong. So which loath do you choose? Loath with an E or loath without an E? They have the similar sound, different spelling, and also mm, different meaning in the category. So they have different grammar categories. One is a verb, one is an adjective. So, which loath do you select? Come on, come on. Paula says A. Stephanie also types A. Jandre Maria says A. Okay, I see general answer is A for what you see or for what I see. <laughs> correct. Ah, well, they say correct, but no explanation. So, a uh, loath without an e means an adjective, unwilling or reluctant, no gustoso. So in that case, he was reluctant to admit to being wrong. So loath without e is an adjective. And b, loath with an e, is the verb. Is the verb that means feeling intense disgust. It's basically similar to hate. When you say I loathe uh, politicians or I hate politicians. So in that case, they come to be similar. Okay, niña. So with this part, we have finished our session of today. Well, some final words. Uh, today we were checking the third conditional structure. Remember that it's not a tense, but it's a structure. Uh, I see that some of you were trying to practice the third conditional in the right way, but you still need more practice, right? So uh, for this weekend, we are going to open an activity in Google Classroom, and the activity is some practice about the third conditional. So this afternoon, I will be opening the activity in Google Classroom. So you will have a Thursday, Friday, uh, even Saturday and Sunday to finish the exercise, right? So that's all for today, guys. Thank you for coming and see you on Monday at the video conference. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, Jandre. Bye, Andrea. Bye, Luisa. Bye, Paula, as well. Bye, Lisette. Thanks for joining. Bye, Stephanie. Thank you, teacher. The class was interesting. Thank you very much because you are my motivation for making it interesting for 